no, this place is good Mexican. And I'm just like, no, it's not. It's not. There's no good Mexican food in New York. Come for me. Pedro Pascal is wrong. Se se contradice si pasara por aquí. No tiene razón. No ha visitado mi clan restaurant y it was a, a funny stuff that he said, and I, don't, I respect the guy, but I think he's wrong this time. Mr. Pascal, you probably haven't been to the city in a while, and there's always been great Mexican food in Queens, but even Manhattan has some gems now. So in our opinion, here are some places you should visit next time you come to New York. Oh, that's good, bro. Hey, you guys heard what Pedro Pascal said about Mexican food in New York City. Listen, I love the Mexican food in LA, but New York's got its own thing going on. So we're starting off at Los Tacos. Tacos number one. Listen, here at Los Tacos number one, they do Tijuana style tacos, but it's so good. They got the system down pat. I'm gonna give them this ticket and then I'm gonna get to choose at the moment of whether I want corn or flour tortilla. They make both in-house, so I'm gonna get both. That's everything. Okay, I got two steak tacos, two chicken tacos, two pork, one cactus, one pork, mula corn. Yes? Yeah, but the mula, okay. can I get it? Flour? Some horchata while we're waiting, y'all. I'm here with my friend Jose. Jose, you're Ecuadorian, but you've been to Mexico City before. Does this feel like Mexico City, maybe? I feel like I'm a little. I'm in Mexico right now. Okay. I feel like I'm. In Mexico. Is there a certain part of Mexico you think that you're in right now? Oh, Mexico City. Okay. All right. Yo, you got the tamarindo. I need, I need, a good, I need Gotta a get the coke. diet coke. I know that's the Mexican coke. Obviously, has the real sugar, but you know we like DC out here. Guys, this is the only taco spot in New York City that my friends visiting from LA, you know, taco enthusiasts have said that it's also really good and this is their favorite taco spot in New York City. Listen, they make everything fresh. Look at this flour tortilla. It's so thin, it's almost see-through, it's stretchy. And then you got the corn right here. Show that off. Guys, I know sometimes people think like the pre-made corn ones, it's like a little dry. These are fire, so. Cheers, Cheers for Los Tacos number one. Mmm. Straight out of Mexico. Very good. Yo. Want a little spice? They have these little fried chili peppers. I do that too. Look how stretchy that tortilla is, man. You can see through it. It almost feels like one of those Peking duck wraps. Mmm. I think he's gonna visit Los Tacos. And then we uh, reevaluate what he said. It's crazy because they named it Los Tacos number one, but they lived up to it. Like, how often do you see that? When a brand is like, yo, we're number one, and then it turns out to be number one. But they don't just have tacos at Los Tacos. They have a mula, they have quesadillas, they have some off the menu items. This is a mula, it's a corn tortilla with like cheese on both sides. And I guess I'm gonna eat it like a sandwich. And the tortilla is the bun. Let's go. Mm. So often I'll get a taco that's like double wrap with the tortilla and it's like too thick, but this is perfect, man. Well, we got travel size small. I'm gonna try it with travel size, baby. Let me know if we should release this as a product. Mula sandwich with smala. Smala goes best on the Autobata, but honestly, the Autobata doesn't even need anything. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not gonna. I don't know how you guys feel about cactus tacos, no bao. I'm not even a huge fan, but I always get it here because I gotta get my veggies in. So going off what Pedro Pascal said when he said that there was no good Mexican food in New York City, I think five years ago, that was kind of true. But nowadays, guys, there's spots like Los Tacos number one and all these other spots that we're going to that are delicious. This is authentic Tijuana style, straight from Mexico, but they did it amazing. So you know what? I just got to show you another spot. Like we said, guys, 
On this crawl, we've just been staying in a very, very small area. All these spots are relatively new in the past five, six years, sometimes one year. But uh, I wanted to ask you, did you hear Pedro Pascal say that there's no good Mexican food in New York City? You know, New York is mainly about um, like uh, not Mexican people and uh, a lot of people come from California, from Chicago, from Texas. And everybody believes that uh, they have the really authentic food on, food on those states. But I think in New York, there's like a very different uh, type of Mexican people and you can really find different types of Mexican food. You know? Because a lot of the people in New York that are from Mexico are from like Puebla or like yeah. Oaxacans, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a lot of, well, Mexico is a huge country too. And, Every state has different traditions too, you know? Like my culture is Chululteca. And Chululteca is from, uh, I, uh, from Mayan civilization. Mm -hmm. We base on corn. So basically, uh, nixtamalization, it, it, it didn't meant for tortillas, it meant for tamales. Oh. That's why it calls nixtamal. So, so what do you want to say to anybody on the internet who says New York doesn't have authentic Mexican food? What, what do you want to say to them? Well, I want to say, like, uh, I mean, don't be scared, you know, come to New York and uh, look in the small pop and mom shops and, you know, they have their really authentic food. But, uh, I mean, all you got to do is just try it, yeah. Just try it, guys. Listen, Pedro, Pascal, just try it. Like I said, guys, you don't have to look far. Every single spot that we went in this video is literally around Union Square or Houston, and that's like walking distance from each other. You are looking at a longanisa torta. I got a fried egg in it. And, uh, man, I had a great talk with about corn versus nixtamal versus mazeca, and I just know that, you know, I, I understand the criticisms of New York, not being authentic, but I'm telling you, it's delicious. And everybody cooking the food is from Mexico legitimately. Listen guys, I'm not saying that putting the lettuce in there or the egg in there is like 10 out of 10, the old school way, but I'm telling you, this is an incredibly good torta. All right, you guys, are, you are looking at a mole chicken tamale, and they do it the hard way. It takes three days to make it, guys. It is a very complex process. He was talking to me about how, you know, it is difficult to do it on the East Coast because you're far from Mexico. You need to ship in ingredients. It's expensive from Puebla, Oaxaca. You know, obviously there's a more direct pipelines to LA. So like I said, I'm not taking anything away from LA Mexican food. It is amazing. Obviously very vast, very expansive. I'm just saying there's a lot more stuff in New York than people think. Hey, listen guys, they do this tra the traditional Aztecan style. Guys, shout out to Quetzalcoatl. I mean, I think when it comes to saying whether New York has good Mexican food or not, I think you have to take into account, like, all these spots we went to are in Manhattan. And they're in lower Manhattan. They're actually all, like, biking distance from each other. And you got the most authentic tamales in the city, which are delicious and fluffy. These are the best tamales I've ever had in New York. I buy them off the cart sometimes. These are the best. You got some of the best tacos that you've shown. And I think that sometimes people are always like, oh, well, Brooklyn, deep Brooklyn has this or deep Queens has that. That's not to discredit it. That is still count as part of New York. But we all understand that those places are all still pretty far to get to at least takes 25 minutes, 20, 30 minutes on the train. So I'm saying, if you don't want to travel that far, New York, Manhattan has really good food, especially Tijuana style and things like this at Factory Tamal. But what do you guys think? Is Pedro Pascal still right? Does New York still not that have that good of Mexican food or is it getting better? Let me know in the comments down below. Listen, a lot of people think that when it comes to Mexican food in New York City, that, oh, we only got gentrified tacos in these nice spots and everything's so expensive. Oh, like they don't have good taco trucks. Wrong, wrong, Pedro Pascal. You're wrong, because Birria Landia truck is a New York staple. Started in Queens, has a location in Brooklyn, has a truck in Manhattan now, and this is competitive with LA Birria tacos. So I'm gonna go get some. They got molitas, they got consomme, they got uh, tostadas. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. I'm gonna show you what's up. I'm getting a small consomme. Can I get a mojita? Can I get a tostada? 
and then uh, another taco. And you know they're doing good business because you can pay with card. Oh, can I get the guava boing too? I don't know if I'm making a convincing argument to you when I told the other man that you were Chilean. He didn't like that. The Mexican <laughs> chef, he was like, Chilean? <laughs> What's he doing? Woo! All right, guys, we got our order. I spent $24. Let's check it out. Yeah, this. Oh, you're getting this one. Ba, ba, ba. All right, so guys, to be fair, in Manhattan, this truck has only been around for about a year and a half. So, but I will say that this probably is considered the best taco truck overall in Manhattan. So, anyways. Queens, there's other ones, of course. So let me try this Lolita right here. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh, look at that, look at that. With the little crumbled cheese on it. I mean, that looks delicious. I mean, honestly. Bro. Oh my gosh, if you don't know what a molita is, it's basically like, Two tortillas, but it's grilled with the birria, uh, consomme sauce. You got cheese on both sides. I mean, it, it does have the similar ingredients, let's be honest, guys, but uh, it's just a slightly different form. And I like it personally because both the tortillas got cheese and it's crispy. Okay, so the owners of Birria Landia truck are actually from Puebla, but they're serving Tijuana style Birria tacos because to be honest, I think it's the most consumable for the masses and if you're trying to be successful. So I guess if you want to say it's not 100% the most, you know, from the originators, I guess all I'd have to say is that I guess people are serving really good Tijuana style Mexican food in New York City. This is a tostada. It ended up being a taco though as I fold it, but anyways, let's go. And look at this beef right there. Shredded, dripping, delicious. Guys, now here, last but not least, a different form of something similar. You have the tostada. Extra crispy crust at the bottom though. Look at that, I'm just gonna tap it, tap it. And then for this one, I'm definitely gotta pour a little bit more of these, uh, oh my gosh. I didn't mean to put that much. Oh, look at that beautiful, with the purple and the green and the red and white and the... It's delicious. All right, bring some hand wipes with you. Mmm, black crispy dark, oh my gosh. All right, I would say form factor wise, this is the hardest one to eat, but taste wise, I might put the tostada as my favorite. I mean, listen, right across the street from this Beer Landia truck, there's this really high-end Mexican restaurant called Ixta, right around the corner. You can see it. That's maybe what he's referring to when he says that there's no good Mexican food because it's decent food, but it's kind of over expensive. But here at the Bilia Landia truck and having lived in LA, comparing it to the spots in LA, I feel like it can go heads up with LA trucks. I mean, but you're right that there is still more Mexican food in LA overall, which is logical. Check out this guava beverage straight from uh, San Juan del Rio, Mexico. That's good. But what's also good is this consomme. This is all. This too is also filled with electrolytes and sodium and warmth. Oh. Oh. Like we said, guys, Pascal may have been right at some point, but definitely over the past few years, he's wrong. We're at Joe's Tacos. They came from Guerrero, Mexico, which is a state near Puebla. And uh, let's check it out because they got something to say to Pedro Pascal. What's going on, bro? Hey, man, what's up? How are you? How you doing, man? Pablo, nice to meet you, man. Hey. Uh is there, is there good Mexican food in New York City now? Yeah, of course. There is many places. There's the Brown, there's the Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt Avenue. There is um, Brooklyn, even here in Manhattan, you know? There is many good stuff. A lot of people don't think that though, right? No, no, they are wrong. <laughs> uh, do you think they maybe used to be right, but now they're wrong? No. Uh, maybe like five years ago, 10 years ago, they, they were right, but now they're wrong. Yes, exactly. I mean, probably 10, year, 10 years ago, they started to, to, to do some Mexican style. Uh, but, um, you know, we try to bring everything from California, from Mexico, the spices, the dry out, you know. So at this point, 10 years later, yeah, we got pretty good stuff. So what do you want to say to Pedro Pascal? I mean, uh, uh, 
it was a, a funny stuff that he said, and I don't, I respect the guy, but I think he's wrong this time. He's, he's wrong, guys. <laughs> Listen, guys, they're from Guerrero, Mexico. Joe's Tacos. We about to get in the kitchen. All right, what are we cooking over here, chef? That is a uh, carne asada. Carne asada. The tacos, the chorizo, we do by my own. And that is alfa pastor. Ooh, and you grilling the pineapple chunks in the Yeah, of course, it has to, you know? It has to be like that. What is different between grilling the pineapples in with it and then just slicing and putting it on top later? Because, yeah, they got, they got combined it and got the flavor, of course, you know, because it's grilling at the same time. Uh, you know, of course, that, you know, gets together all the flavor in the same spot. And, has to be your real pineapple. I got a pineapple right here. Hey guys. Oh right. my goodness, man. Tell us what we're looking at. We're you looking got at? al pastor, you got chorizo, and you got carne asada. Mmm, right. thank you, man. Yes, Hell yeah. Uh, has a little, uh, uh, onions, carne masada, onions, and you know? Oh. That's it. Hey, listen, guys. Enjoy, please, okay? Thank you, thank no, you. Thank you, no, thank you, you guys. This is, got, this is all you need right now, guys. I forgot something, yes. You got a oh, and you in got the a sealed mic. boba cups. <laughs> Hell yeah. We're here at Joe's Taco, straight out of Guerrero, man. I'm telling you, you can feel something different. You know how in Cantonese we have this thing called wok hay. I'm telling you, this got the truck hay. This, in the sense that it just got the fire that you would just see on a in a CVS parking lot, man. That is a LA style taco. Oh my goodness. You can see the chorizo right here. Everything's cooked perfectly. Everything's done super authentically. I can't believe we're on 14th Street in Union Square right now, guys. I'm telling you, Pedro Pascal, you can just come to Union Square, one of the most Americanized parts of Manhattan, and still find good tacos to this day. You can see the al pastor was cooked with the pineapple. The pineapple is charred. I'm telling you, these are kicking in a way that Los Tacos number one doesn't even kick, guys. Oh, I went with everything on the al pastor. Listen, guys, culture changes, society changes, and the quality of Mexican food in New York City changes very quickly. you guys the spices here are on another level i'm just saying your friend stacy she might not be able to handle it but i like it listen guys you are looking at a blackened shrimp taco uh guerrero is a state of mexico that has inland as well as a coastline along the water so i'm super excited to try this guys come out on this i'm telling you guys that's not a San Diego Baja shrimp taco like the one we just had. That's one that's from Mexico coastline Camarones. So does Pedro need to come there, Pedro Pascal? Next time he's in New York? Pedro, I'm calling you out, bro. Guys, between the two, my favorite is the Al Pastor or Autobata. I think they're very similar. I actually don't know the difference. But I also have a horchata here, so I'm about to uh, compare this to the one at Los Tacos number one. This is the same combo. Mmm. Well, I mean, I want to be clear here. This has more spices, more salt, and more seasoning. Mmm. But, for me, guys, when they give you two tortillas, I only eat one. That's my secret. Trying the horchata. Ooh, that's a tough one. Who's horchata was better? This one's pretty good though. I like it. It comes in a boba cup. Guys, what I'm trying to say is that there's certain aspects of each spot that I think are better than the others. But overall, Pedro Pascal is a little outdated. I'm not saying he was he wasn't wrong for when he went to New York or the places he tried, but I'm saying if you really go dig, you can find some really good Manhattan taco spots, things that satisfy the authentic truck palette that you're looking for that earthy spicy tones or you want that more you know cleaned up style tijuana style or you can get like the gringo style and the tex-mex listen they have it all homemade green sauce right here homemade verde 
Mm. Hey guys, I had to try the shrimp taco with smala on it, our very own sauce. Let's check it out. I think it's gonna go really well with this cream sauce that they have on it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It goes great with the creamy chipotle. Wow. I like that a lot. All right, you guys, Summer Salt's whole mission was to bring California-style burritos to New York City. You can either get a mission style, which is rice and beans, or you can get them California-style, which is a little bit more San Diego, Baja, with the French fries. I got a crispy fish burrito with the French fries, California-style. I got a double shrimp, a double fish, carne asada. I'm telling you guys, you know, I, I was skeptical of Summer Salt, too. I thought it was going to be a little touristy but it's valid. As you guys may know, there are so many different genres of Mexican food. For example, some people want CDMX, some people want Tijuana, other people want San Diego, and that's what in 2019, two Californians tried to do with somersault. Here we guys, we're looking at a San Diego style burrito, guys, with the guac in it. Ah, look at that. That's crispy fish, fresh out of the fryer, San Diego style with the flour tortilla. Um, they did change recently from french fries to tater tots as the uh, carb in the California San Diego Baja style, so they might lose points for that, but let's see how it tastes. Listen guys, it tastes 90% like a San Diego burrito from Pacific Beach. Uh, I'm telling you, and considering that we're in Manhattan right now, and I didn't have to go to Brooklyn, I didn't have to go to Queens, shout out to those spots, I know it's even more authentic over there, but I'm telling you, some people in Manhattan, they just want Baja style from San Diego, and this is doing a good job. Now, do I think that Pascal was actually referring to San Diego style surf and turf burritos with like French fries in them? No, but it goes to show you that, listen, Los Tacos number one was in, within walking distance of here. I'm talking about this is like all around Union Square, 14th Street. Let's try the carne asada. Literally guys, I would think that I was in LA or San Diego right now. And like I said, this just opened up in 2019, so this is a very, very recent advent in New York. Listen guys, I'm not saying I value gringo Mexican food or San Diego Mexican food over like CDMX, Tulum, Tijuana style, but I'm just saying, if you like gringo food from California, this is a very, very good Baja version of it. And it's all around the city now. Adobo shrimp, Baja San Diego style. I know what you're thinking, hey guys, why would Somersault have some really good tacos? But listen, look at that shrimp. You can see by the seasoning and all those darkened chilies in there, that there's like that deep, kind of like earthy tone flavoring that is in the shrimp that you maybe wouldn't expect that you'd get from a spot like Somersault. So honestly, I thought they did this blackened adobo shrimp dish really, really well. This is the best thing here. You guys gotta get this. This one right here, look, look at the flavor. Mm. Wow. Wow. All right, one of our last spots in this video is Miklan in the Lower East Side. Just to show you how Mexican food is prevalent throughout Manhattan. And Miklan, I mean, this spot's pretty traditional. Miklan is referring to the, obviously the Aztecan mythology of kind of like their afterlife. But anyways, I'm not gonna say anything more. Let's go get some food. Do you know this guy, Pedro Pascal? Actor, he's famous ah. like actor. Okay, he said this. Okay. There's no good Mexican food in New York. Respectful Lito. So, oh! <laughs> No, es, es en Nueva York hay buena comida, sí, o sea, principalmente empezando por nosotros aquí que estamos en el Lower East Side, Manhattan y nos dedicamos especialmente a la comida mexicana auténtica, el mole poblano auténtico creado mm. en casa. Tenemos una carta amplia de comida vegana y la verdad que lo que dice se contradice si pasara por aquí. No tiene razón, no ha visitado mi clan restaurant y como mi clan restaurante también hay buenos sitios en New York, Manhattan. So he's wrong. Yeah. He's wrong. They said, hey, you guys heard it first. Put the translate on it. He said, Pedro Pascal is wrong. Wrong? No, no. All right, who is flying out? 
Rajas con crema. Rajas con crema. Rajas con crema. Ooh. Okay. And this then, is this, this is the premier this item, guys. De pollo con mole. Right, this is a pollo chicken mole burrito, and I'm very, very excited. Inside the mole poblano, authentic. Oh, all right. Authentic chicken mole. All right, thank you, thank you, gracias. All right, here at Miklan, I got the chicken mole burrito. I got uh, flour tortillas right here. I got poblano rajas con crema. Let's take a look at this. This is a dish I've never actually chosen to get, but I just feel like eating poblano peppers is very authentic. Not every spot is gonna serve that dish. So shout out to Miklan. Of course, you have your guac here, but let me cut open this burrito. Mm. Guys, have you ever had a chicken mole burrito? That is the question. Take a look at that. Mr. Pascal, Senor Pascal, this is just at a spot down the block from where I live. And look how good it is. Look at the range of dishes you can get. All right, I'm gonna take a bite. Chicken mole burrito. Mmm. Oh, that's good, bro. Sweet, earthy, nutty, but mixed in with the cheese. I mean, look at this with a little bit of verde sauce right there. Bang. I think mole, especially in New York City, is a trending dish. And most of the times that I've had it, it's a chicken leg with mole sauce all over it. But I actually think that the mole burrito might be the most accessible, best way for a beginner to eat mole. I think it's delicious, definitely must try this. All right guys, moving on to the appetizer that I'm eating second, but this is rajas con crema. These are poblano peppers with mushrooms and cream, and I'm gonna put it, oh, and cheese, sorry. Oh my gosh, look at this, look at this color here. Let me just put it on this tortilla right here. Bang, bang, bang. That looks incredible. Incredible, guys. Listen, accessible dishes, dishes you've never had before, but they're not too crazy. Guys, these dishes are hidden. Let me tell you this, all right? Miklan is doing some things, and it seems like a Mexican restaurant that you've been to before, but they definitely got some dishes that you haven't had before. So check it out, guys. Mole burrito, rajas con crema, delicious. Great appetizers, great food. Man, I'm, I'm so glad I'm filming here right now, honestly. And last but not least, we got some fish tacos with pico mango. So it's kind of like mango that's been uh, saladized, like pico de gallo anyways. Guys, honestly, food here is not that expensive. Just when you think that, oh, these are Manhattan prices, everything's getting gentrified. The burrito was $14. The Rojas con crema was, uh, Rajas con crema was $15. And these, you know, not too much. So you're getting high quality food in lower Manhattan. That's authentic. Look at how spicy that fish is. Look at that slice of fish. Let's get into it. Mmm. Mr. Pascal! To your credit, Miklon's only been around for a couple years, but you gotta come back to New York, bro. Listen guys, it's 2024, especially during the, you know, pandemic. So many people spend time in Mexico City, Tulum. So these concepts are coming back. And that's actually where the controversy around this spot, El Churro, comes from. Because some people say they copied Chueria El Moro in Mexico City. But let me tell you this, man. Regardless, they are making the churros fresh. They got a bunch of dips. This is the s'mores one. They toasted it on top. And I'm just telling you that you can get fresh churros. Listen guys, nobody said that churros were the most macro friendly food out there, but I'm telling you, this probably is very similar because they tried to make it similar, controversial or not, to Mexico City. So, 
like I said, the authenticity is here. By the way, I know that the s'mores flavor is not that authentic, but they still want to appeal to the American market, of course. But um, yeah, like we said, man, there's some cool concepts out here, and they just opened up. 